Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing? Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello everybody. Our new show that we are starting right here, right now. It's a little thing we like to call Disney Discussions. Us here on this podcast, a lot of us, me, Joseph, Andrew. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Howdy. Good. Very good. Very, um, very good. Manisha Solid. will be here on her next one. She couldn't make it. She's out of town. I know, her first one. She can't be a But Disney Discussions is basically what you would call like a Disney movie book club where each week, or actually do, we're going to try to do this month and see, monthly, see how that goes. It's kind of like it's hard to get us together a lot of times. But it's yeah. like a Disney book movie book club where each episode, one of us chooses a movie, any Disney movie, and let's exclude movies like... Um, the Avengers, like Marvel movies, we're excluding Star Wars, and uh, we'll exclude like the Miyazaki movies, like those uh, that from that anime studio, and we'll just mm -hmm. stick to like Disney proper, and um, we're gonna watch the movies, and uh, you should watch it along with us, and we are going to discuss the movie and rank the movie and watch a bunch of Disney movies and have a good time. Oh yeah. So since this is our Magical first episode. Time. Jordan, a, a very magical, magical time. time. We will harness the power of Disney magic and uh, let it flow through us during this journey. Let it go. Movies. Let it go. All right, not yet. We're, we're, we're not uh, starting at that one. But, Joseph, okay. you actually picked our first one. I did. I picked the uh, 1986 version of uh, Sherlock Holmes called The Great Mouse Detective. Um, it's All a Disney right. classic. And I guess you probably should just give very brief. I'm gonna give like a like I'm gonna say what the movie's about in like one sentence. How does that sound? Go for it. One sentence. Wow. Well, Do yeah. It. Okay. So it's a story about a guy or a mouse named Basil who is. is it, which one is it, Joseph? Is it a guy or is it a mouse? Sorry, a mouse <laughs> named Basil who investigates um, basically the kidnapping of a toy maker. As he ba does battle with Professor Radigan, who is a rat who actually thinks he's a mouse or pretends he's a mouse. So that's basically the story in a nutshell. Oh, Radigan. Oh, oh Radigan. Radigan. Oh, he's so Radigan. Mean. Which, when by I, the way, like, when I, when I rewatched it, I had forgotten that, that there's like a, a villain song in the middle of it. It's so great. So random. We'll talk about that because it's like, I was like, oh, whoa, there's a song. It's like one of the only songs really in this movie. It's weird to have like a movie that has a song, but it's not, I don't know if I'd call this a musical. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a movie, it's a cartoon that has a, has a song in it. <laughs> right, for sure. Kind of like, have you guys ever seen uh, The Polar Express and how it's kind of like random, how there's just one song in the movie? Yeah. Like, yeah. What? what why? I, I mean, I, it's, a, it's a fine song. It's just it's just weird. But anyways, let's go ahead and get right into it. I watched this movie actually a long time ago. It took us a while to actually get us together, but um, I watched it with Manisha, so it was kind of crappy that she couldn't be a part of this, but I watched it here was with her. Was it her first time seeing it? Um, I'm not sure if it was her first time. She didn't say, but um, it's my first time in a long time. I'll tell you that. Like, I remember watching this movie. Like, you know, like my mom had to go to work like super early when I was in elementary school, and so she had to like drop me off at school. And so there's always like those movies, like those VHS tapes that the school had in rotation to kind of keep us like pacified. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> until school started. And the Great Mouse Detective was one of them. So it's been that long since I've seen it. But um. Wow. So I'm I'm interested to see what you guys have to say about it, and I was really interested to watch it because like there was a lot of stuff I just forgot about. Is this like your to... first adult viewing? You would say? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Most yeah. definitely. Um, the one of the first things I wrote down about this movie that the at the beginning of this movie is quite frightening. <laughs> oh yeah. For a children's movie. <laughs> yeah. You have like the strange noises and the bat bust through the door to kidnap. Like the toy maker, who is it's weird. It's funny because like right right away, I was like, oh hey, Uncle Scrooge, because that's totally Uncle Scrooge's yeah. voice. Yeah. And it's doing the he's doing the same voice too. I don't know if that's that voice actor, it's just regular <laughs> voice. But yeah, how horrifying for a little kid to watch that. Oh yeah, and because the little kid gets pushed into like a cupboard, and like a yeah. door gets closed, and 
<laughs> and you like see the struggle in like shadows, and you like you think he's being killed. He's like, no, oh, oh. <laughs> as they like tussle as he's getting kidnapped. It's really horrifying. And then like yeah. it reminds me of like Fidel Goes West sadness. Like there's a couple moments in Fidel Goes West and Coming to America or an American Tale. I mean, <laughs> where it's just like you start crying. Too bad that's not a Disney movie. Yeah. yeah, but like, oh boy, reference. What, what was it? It was just weird stuff when it comes to like sad mouse movies. And the secret of Nim is kind of dark too. What is, what is up with like us in like the eighties and nineties well, having like sad mouse movies? M- mice just, you know, they get they get the bad end of the like animal spectrum of rodents. You know, like they're always, yeah. you know, <laughs> you don't call it a rat trap. Oh, that's true. It has to be mouse. Yeah. They're the most sympathetic mouse. of yeah. rodents. Well, it's funny that you start off the conversation with like it not being a kids' film. I mean, if you notice, like there's a there's a part where there's drinking and smoking, and then <laughs> actually one of the m- mice or mouses in the movie gets or mouse he gets eaten by a cat. Now, I mean, it's not like super uh-huh. graphic, but it's yeah. definitely there, you know. Yeah, it was made to be really scary. You hear the footsteps, and then everyone's like taking off their hat and all sad when he gets eaten by the cat. Because he's y'all, all because he was drunk, kids. So I, I guess, guess don't drinking. Yeah. Yes. Don't get that's too excited happens. during the villain song, <laughs> and then you might say something inappropriate. I have questions about that later, though. But like something else I've written here because I noticed is that girl almost has Feifel's hat, like from the American Tale, like in the beginning of this movie. And yeah. I was just like, oh man, I I don't know that's what funny. date. The American Tale came out, but I can kind of like I don't know what inspired what because like it kind of seemed similar, but um, but yeah um, and so like when we get introduced to what is essentially our Watson character, um, Dawson, it's like it's like so close to being Watson. It's like it's Dawson, and, and like it's when I start getting kind of like whoa, this is kind of weird because they're they are Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Like mm-hmm. that's right. the thing I feel like we should get out. Th- those are those characters. But they didn't Except have the loyal- they didn't have the royalties, so they couldn't technically use their names. They just had to use names that were similar. The like- and it was part oh. of, and it yeah. was part of like um, because they're in like the hu- like they're in the world too. They're like part of it, like most other Disney animation, um, you know, movies. It's like they're part of the human world. They just are there. It's really that's really confusing too to find out that like they're living not only like counterpart lives to Sherlock Holmes and Doctor Watson, they live in the same house where he's doing his shenanigans yep. upstairs. And not only that, which was confusing, is Dawson has the same backstory as 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 uh, Watson. Yep. He came from Afghanistan, <laughs> which raises a mini a question. <laughs> like what's going on in Afghanistan? Is there there a mouse war alongside of the hum- whatever human war or whatever was going on at the time? Right. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> well, we we limit a lot of times. Disney just really brings a lot of serious animal kingdom <laughs> issues to light that we would have never known. You know, like Watson. There is a mouse. Okay, we've got to get deployed. Okay, you see him? He's getting deployed. We've got to go also and. It's uh, it's sobering. <laughs> it, really, it really hits close to home in a really strange way. What that... you don't know, Jordan, is that under your house, there's a Jordan mouse <laughs> that isn't named Jordan because he doesn't own the royalties to your life. <laughs> he's and named he's... Thornton. Exactly, and he's running around. Oh and he just moved back. He, yeah, he's just moving around Gainesville following your life story. Wow. And he, plays, uh... he plays at a church underneath your church. And wow. Disney owns and he's just him. doing a podcast right now. Wow, Disney that's crazy. owns him. <laughs> and he's like really excited that we're doing a podcast about like one of his heroes, Mickey Mouse. So it's really awesome. But like, so we're introduced to Basil in this movie, and he's a pretty likable character, I think. I mean, like most adaptations of Sherlock, he's usually the the likable jerk. You know, he's like super. Um, out of touch, but he's a genius. I love and a likable right. character we have. Like that's, like that's funny how like Robert Downey Jr. played him because like that's Robert Downey Jr. I guess in real life. I don't know that, but like he plays it so well, and it's it's like really a lot. It's pretty much the same thing here. Um, but like soon after that, like we get like introduced to Radigan. What did you guys think of the villain? 
I, I mean, I liked him as a villain. He was, he was um, scary, but also like, I, I, I don't really know how to describe him. He was kind of insane. Like he, he was both like at one point of the drop of a pin, he would be like all happy and like all you know almost with it and diabolical, and then the next one he would be just pure insanity, mad, angry, vicious. Um, he was, I mean, to me, a villain has to be both of those. It's kind of like the reason why one of the Joker is one of my favorite characters because he's both, um, he's both insane, but at the same time funny and like very much like um, uh, almost. I mean, he's just got this human side to him as well. But at the flip of the at the drop of a coin or whatever, he can just be completely something different. Yeah, apparently he has a real real issue. With, okay, I'm really confused because actually in this movie, when it comes to being a mouse, I feel like there is some like prestige to that. Because why is he so upset about when like he's being called out as being a rat? Because he is a rat, and like they call him a rat, he freaks out and he has that guy killed because mm-hmm. apparently he doesn't like being called a rat, which is what he is, which is strange. Well, right. rats are like sewage, like nasty. Creatures. Diseases. Diseases yeah. are, you know, Carried Disney is us. making, you know, what is the equivalent of this in the human world? You know, okay, we've got mice, we've got rats, you know, what's going on here? Um, the rat is, it's interesting because there's always the certain animals that are demonized by Disney. What's the deal, Disney? You demonizing rats? I mean, I don't know anyone who likes them, but they had to almost do some PR with Ratatouille, because <laughs> we yeah. dealt these rats a bad hand, and now in Ratatouille, we've got to make them enjoyable again somehow. So I don't oh, know. Yeah. I, I like the I like the villain. Um, very like theatrical. You know, they, they had a lot of like Shakespearean like movements and gestures that they did with, with animation, which I thought was clever. I like the fact that he like. This villain went to the recording studio, recorded a death anthem to Basil, or Sherlock. Oh, that was so good, yeah. And then puts it on a vinyl record that is the booby trap that kills him on a mousetrap. It's just like... Yep, it's great. Whose job was it to break down the storyline, and how do we get in on the ground level of the next human (laughs) adaptation of this movie? (laughs) Right. Yeah, it's just, it goes it's all so comes for a circle. He's like, he's like, yeah, I was trying to think of the best trap for you, and so I just decided to use all of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's like that part, like was the part where like the movie went from being like, all right, I'm kind of enjoying this. That was the most enjoyable part of the movie. That's where I, I was like, I was laughing quite a bit. That's really funny, and that yeah, that yeah. song is great. <laughs> just like Goodbye. listening to it. <laughs> so soon. <laughs> yeah, and like so that's good. we have. Vincent Price actually oh, yeah. uh, he is voicing amazing. erratic in here, and he's, he did a great job. I think I think I really do think he's the best part of this movie. Like Basil's great too, but like yeah. Radigan, yeah, yeah, Radigan's like the one that's really different here because like we've seen a uh, great Sherlock Holmes and it's like really similar, but Radigan quite good I think. Oh yeah, and he has a song, so that's nice. <laughs> and and again, like it's Disney going like, okay, yeah, Professor Moriarty is the human and an nemesis of. Um, Sherlock Holmes. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna make up one for him here, and then they give him this whole like identity crisis. Like mm-hmm. he's a rat, but he's you know he dresses really nicely. He has on like a tux the whole you know movie, and he has his hair like slicked back, you know. And, and the matter he gets, he's like, and then like his hair just automatically goes out of. <laughs> yeah, and his face starts turning all sorts of colors, and, and and like one of my favorite things about it was his his right hand man is a bat with a peg leg, a, a second class citizen, I might say as well, because like I also noticing that like in the bar scene, they're like there's like lizards and like other animals like entertaining these mice, and they're like getting crap thrown at them. It, I don't know. I think there's some. Some race war- warfare here, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think it's true, but like you don't you don't see a lot of like the the detail and a lot of the like 
statement, so to speak, that they're making when you're a kid and you're watching this movie. Like, me and Joseph probably have super similar background with this movie as far as, like, when we first saw this movie. Oh, yeah. Together, forget yeah. Lion King. Forget every movie ever because <laughs> we watched this movie on repeat constantly. Yep. And, the like, before we decided we were going to watch it for Disney discussions, patent pending, <laughs> um, we, me and Taylor, this is actually the first Disney movie we ever watched together. Cause she, had you seen it? She's not listening. But <laughs> you know, um, we watched it together, and man, just like this movie is great on so many levels. When you're a kid, you want to be Basil, but then the older you get, you kind of realize that you know it's mm-hmm. not so good being a mouse. You know, you know <laughs> there's a it's a hard. Yeah, there's a big, there's a large fat cat with a bow on her head who is named Victoria, who's looking right. to chomp on you. But something something interesting, I did like some mild reading while I was watching it. Um, and this movie was actually pushing – like people wanted to rate this PG-13 when it came out. Did you know that? What? Are no. you serious? Yeah. I know it was they, PG originally, right? Yeah. And wow. they wanted to push for like certain things to be taken out of the movie completely because they thought it was too inappropriate. Like the I'll, I'll Be Good to You or whatever song – um, oh, you know, yeah. scene with all the mice, and you know, and Disney got it passed because they were just like, "Oh yeah, this is this. These are mice, not people, and there's nothing suggest. There's they're just mice." Uh huh. And that's, so they played that card. Yeah. And when they had, uh, I mean, there's a lot of there's like two or three drinking scenes, yeah. and there's smoking. I mean, there's like other things that are like adult natured. Yeah. 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 Especially so for '86, which this did come out before *American Tale*. It was *American Tale*. About the same year. Came, yeah, it came out four months later. Yeah. Okay. So right, there cool. must have been a big thing with companies thinking that mice were going to sell movies. Animated mice are going to rule everything. It's a good right. year for mice, that's for sure. <laughs> Crying out yeah. loud. But like, let's talk about that song a little bit. Like. Uh, the song for like me not remembering this movie very well, I, I seeing that part of the mo- like the movie where the in the bar where they're under in disguise and they get poison or whatever and they're this lady's performing they're all charmed by her. I was one hundred percent convinced that okay this is our this is our lead like mice lady or whatever this is gonna be one of a main character. No, that's it. <laughs> She's there to sing a song and she. Yeah. She pieces out, which I, it's a fine song. I, I I forgot forgot all about it really, like how it went, but it was it was kind of was weird. But um, yeah, I was one hundred percent convinced, and then she leaves because that's usually the part well, where the main girl comes in. Except it's a little late in the movie for that. But yeah, exactly. If you think this is like a a regular length feature film, this is a shorter feature film. This is oh, like yeah. you know like an hour and ten minutes. It's not an hour and a half. So, I mean, it kind of like you know. Yeah, in a normal movie, maybe you'd meet the female lead, but they didn't have one. They didn't need to see, mm-hmm. I, I guess. They didn't need one. Um, yeah. That was it, pretty it was random. A, it was a really watchable length. It was actually was kind of like, whoa, it's over? This is ending? Yeah, this is short. But it, it was, I didn't think it was like too short. It was fine. It told its story and really, mm-hmm. really quickly. But um, let's talk. Can we talk about like the villain's plot real quick? All right, so let me just get this straight. Okay, so he has uh, he kidnaps a toy maker, which basically what they're doing is they're stealing parts from the toy store. Which, by the way, that toy store is horrifying too. Like there was some. You see Dumbo? I saw Dumbo. There we have our Disney um, cameo. Dumbo is there in the toy store. And they got a big old shot of him. But um, he's stealing parts to make what is essentially a, um, a like robot, like remote controlled queen, which <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> It's great. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's 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 good stuff. And what's gonna happen is that you're gonna off the queen by feeding her to the cat, and uh, he's just gonna pose as the queen for the, his entire life. Yeah, well, you know, he's gonna have the robot like, uh-huh. give him the power. So then he's gonna be like the new king or whatever. But yeah, that's yeah, basically that. the villain's plot. I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. <laughs> See, here's the thing about this like movie, and I didn't pick up on this when I was a kid. Andrew might have because he was a little smarter um, when it came to movies and film. But it's really it's a direct story 
it's like point A to point B with like a couple of things in the middle of it. But it's mm-hmm. not like sometimes in, in animated movies or in movies in general, you have like redundancies of stuff that keeps happening. And it's like, okay, we're going to have this climax, there's this big point, and then we're going to go down, and then we're going to go back up, and then we're going to go back down. This movie like had the one climax, like the, you know, where they get in trouble, and then it went to the end. It didn't like have to go up and down again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, which is, I think is, it services this movie really well. It makes it really different. I mean, like, there isn't a lot of movies this brisk and this short. Like, even amongst, like, Disney movies, which are already usually on the shorter side because, you know, they're, they're made for families. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think it makes it a lot really watchable and um, kind of easy to recommend because, you know, the good stuff is it shines through before it, wells, it wears out its welcome, you know, like Correct. Ba- Basil's fun. I enjoy Basil as well as I enjoy Radigan. Think he's funny, and that's, and they, you know, I mean, like Dawson's like whatever. He just plays his part and doesn't really do anything throughout <laughs> the whole movie. But he's just there to be like, you're a genius, Basil. Amazing, <laughs> just like he always does. But um, yeah, yeah Basil's fun. Radigan's fun. It's all, it's all, you know, fun time. I mean, especially since like, again, it's so short. And but that that fight scene we have here at the end, it's pretty. <laughs> It's pretty cool. Like, for yeah. its time, I believe this is actually, you know, the CG integration into these animated movies will, you know, we'll see it later on in the Disney uh, Renaissance, but this was first. This was the first use of CGI integration into a Disney animated movie. Later on, we'll see it again in, like, Beauty and the Beast with that amazing ballroom scene and, like, you know, other stuff. Yeah. And I think there's some of it in Rescuers Down Under, but this was the first one. I thought it looked pretty good. Like, usually yeah. a lot of times we even, especially in, like, modern ones, like, that aren't Disney, and, like, you, when you see it, you're like, oh, it looks bad. Like, Anastasia, has anyone seen Anastasia recently? Not a Disney movie. Not recently. Movie. It's Not a 20th recently. Century Fox. But yeah. some of the CGI in that, it's, like, weird and just, like, ugh, when you look at it. But it's integrated well here. It doesn't look like it's, uh, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. I can imagine it being really impressive. Back in the day, right. yeah. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. sure it was. Now, I mean, f- nowadays it's not. It's like, you know, oh, okay, this is 1986. Yeah, yeah. And you can you can appreciate it for that. But yeah, it, w- it was cool. I mean, what was really cool is um, um, Ron Clements, the guy that kind of wrote it and directed it. Mm-hmm. It's actually one of his like first films. Like he did Black Cauldron, and then he did oh, this, no. and then he's the guy that did uh, Little Mermaid and Aladdin. Wow. Um, so, like, you can definitely see, you know, like, I'm thinking back, like, if I was to watch Little Mermaid and Aladdin, you can see where his shots come into play. It's kind of interesting. Um, while I was watching it, because that's the first thing I did before I watched it, was I went and I, because I, I don't remember who this director was. Oh, Ron mm-hmm. Clements. Okay, let me find out what he's done. Oh, sweet. And so I watched it with, like, more of a critical look to see if I could compare it with anything else he's done. And it's just really... Um, it it was really cool because you you can get definitely see like his style for animated movies at the end, like it's kind of the same. There's like this you know even in you know Aladdin and Little Mermaid the finale is kind of like this scary um, display of battle where you really feel like the hero is going to be gone. Like there's no there's no really way for the hero to get out of this without sacrifice. I guess. But, and there's yeah. some type of trap. Yep. There's always mm-hmm. a trap. Mm-hmm. You know, something to overcome, something you got to, how are they ever going to do this? And then somehow at the last minute, like, you have to, we'll have to go through and watch play-by-play play of how Basil got our two charming mouse heroes out of that situation. But Because you know. he's, like, super defeated at that point because, like, yeah. like, his most important thing to him is his intellect. Like, Radigan didn't come up to him and, like, like, really, like, physically take him down. He took him down, like, with his intellect, and he was just yeah, like... Yeah, he beat him his mind, yeah. He beat he his mind. He was just done. He was just like... But once he was able to figure it out, he's like, wait a minute, I am a genius! And then he, like... Yeah, then he figured it out, and it's hilarious. And then, power like, that whole... positive thinking. The power of positive thinking! And then that whole, say cheese, or whatever, it's like, that was great. Best part of the movie. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. That was, oh, a, was, that was a cool part. Uh, debatable. Debatable, right. Jordan. What do you think? What do you think is the best part? The best part of the movie? When he oh. turns the propeller into a bicycle. <laughs> He's pedaling up. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, that entire like 
okay, we're in some contraption where I'm pedaling and this thing is like a hot air balloon slash blimp that's flying, and then we're using a bunch of balloons and releasing air to chase you and somehow steering. It's, <laughs> I mean, and then you get Big Ben in there. <laughs> and how then, many times did I try to fly with the balloon after seeing that movie? <laughs> I can't say I can count them on my hands. Well, I'm and, glad you're alive. That's <laughs> when, yeah, sure. you yeah. jump off the roof with a balloon or anything. Joseph let the air out of my balloons. <laughs> with what's really interesting is too, um, in these Disney movies, the villain, they look really, really scary at the end. Yeah. Like, almost in every movie, like I'm, I'm thinking of like right now, Gaston. At the very uh-huh. end, when he's fighting the beast, he looks like the beast. And in this movie. This this rat really looks like a rat. Like he's just like, uh-huh. all, he's like lost all of his clothing, and like he's like he's got his tail like way back there, and he's got claws, and he's like wanting to like, you know, eat. That's a good thing. Yeah, because like a lot of like they keep it all laughs kind of like he's really funny throughout the movie for the most part, and then at the end he's like goes beast mode. It's pretty cool. I, I think it's a I think it's a good villain actually. So. Um, but yeah, uh, anything else you guys want to say about uh, this movie before we go into our, our rating system, whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it turns out to be? Yeah, I think one of the things I like about this movie, which we've already kind of touched on, but it's it's interesting just to like, you know, when someone's writing a book nowadays, the like publisher will say, okay, we need a 200-page book, we need that manuscript, 200 pages. And so they'll write a book that's a certain length, and it'll drag on and on towards the three-quarter mark, you know. And, like, this mm-hmm. movie is, like, a shining example of you... For a great kids' movie... Kids, debatable. Um, for a great kids' movie, you don't need an hour and a half. I mean, ideally, most movies that uh, Disney put out during this era hit right at, what, an hour and 20 minutes? Maybe yeah. at, a long one was an hour and 30 minutes, but this one being an hour and 10, mm-hmm. I mean... You can sit down, you can watch it. I agree with Joseph. It just like steadily climbs, climb, and then you're done. That's it. Yeah. And that's the great, great feature of the movie. Um, that being said, not not the greatest Disney movie of the '80s for sure, but no. definitely admirable for the budget and the vision that they had for it. So. Yeah, it's it's one to watch. I'd say it's you know some if you're into Disney, like if if, if you're watching the show, uh, chances is that you are. But um, give it a watch. If, if it's something like if you're like me and you haven't seen it for a while, I came out of it. I was like, I enjoyed it for sure. I didn't come out thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna watch this movie every year or anything like that. But I'm, I'll revisit it eventually for sure. It's on Netflix. It's an easy watch. It's not too long. It's you'll be you'll laugh a little bit. So yeah, I, I I'd say I, I I'd recommend it for sure. Um, let's go. Let's go ahead and kind of like try to explain what our system is right now. This well, this might change. This is our first episode. All right. So what we have? We have three three, three, ratings. three ratings. Lowest being Disney Disney pass. Don't need to see it. Any it can range anywhere from you don't need to see it. Save or, your money. You know, save save, your, your, save money. your time. Save your uh-huh. eyes. Save it all. Yeah. And then um, in the middle here we have uh, decent Disney. Decent Disney, which Basically means it's good. It's good. It's a, it could among Disney movies that are you know decent and good. And, you know, not definitely doesn't tarnish any reputation. If you're a Disney fan, watch it for sure. You know, and if you just want a, a fun family movie, yeah, we, we watch it. It's so, a recommendable. But uh, so, Disney. So just classic, to add a little a little bit of a definition there. Would yeah. a decent Disney be like how many re- like revisits would you have there? Is it one that you would revisit like every two years, every three years, or is it like yeah, every few years? I wouldn't mind watching this and being like okay. having it on, not like ritualistically, but like uh, right now, if someone was like, "Let's watch a Great Mouse Detective." I'd be like, "I, I just watched that," but like give it like if if it, like a year next year or something like that, someone's like, "Let's watch the Great Mouse Detective." I'd be like, yeah, I'd love to. You know, okay. one of the it's like it's like that. It's super. It's recommendable for for like Disney fans for sure, and like if you like. Family movies, like but like Luke. Luke isn't on this, um, the series that we're doing because he's not, you know, in animated movies. Really, he's not in Disney movies. But you know, so I for him, I'd be like, nah, you don't need to. But like for someone like us, it's it's an it's easy to recommend for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we're getting the Disney classics. Disney classics is all our day every day. Review. <laughs> you can recommend this to anyone. It's a fa- it's a fantastic movie. It's a 
prime Disney. Like, if someone was like, I've never seen a Disney movie, you, you'd feel comfortable showing them this as one of the first ones, or, you know, among the ones that you were like, I gotta show them you this. Uh, and so that's, that's where Disney Classic falls in line, where it's just a highly recommendable movie. You're not recommended to just us, but maybe something that we'd recommend to Luke. Um, <laughs> so think of it that way. Recommend yeah. to Luke. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, where would you put this, Joe? Oh, man. To, for me, it's a Disney classic. I mean, right. it's one of it's probably in my um, you know, top ten all time Disney animation movies, and um, it's um one that I can't wait to share one day with my kid. I've already shared it with um my nephews before, and they and they enjoyed it. They liked it, and um, to me, it has like kind of the stuff that we've talked talked about. It's got a you know, um, I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan, so I like the the comparable story to that of a Sherlock Holmes tale, um, and I really like the um, the villain, um, the story, and like kind of what we said, like it's very quick, precise. Um, it's one of those that doesn't drag along. In fact, like when I was watching it again, and I I re- I remembered that it was um, I don't know what it had been. I guess it's been a couple years since I seen it. That song, I'm like, why didn't they make more music to this? I feel like it could have been. That could have actually made it maybe even like higher on my list too, because uh, it can't beat out some of the you know the, the Disney animation musicals that we've um, been privileged to see. So Disney classic for me. All right, um, Andrew. I think this is like um, it's on the fence between two different two different categories. To say that it's a Disney classic. I think is probably a little bit too much for me um, as far as praise goes. To say that it's anything below decent Disney is a joke. It's like right there on the fence between the two to where do I think it's a Disney classic and is it something that I'll definitely, like, do I have it right over there on DVD? Yeah, and would I show it to my kids? Yeah. And, you know... If someone said they hadn't seen it, I would probably sit down and be like, yeah, okay, let's watch it. Um, that being said, it doesn't rank up there with a Disney classic, which is a Disney classic is like, are you kidding me? Beauty and the Beast, I'll watch that today, and if someone hadn't seen it, I would watch it tomorrow. Um, so I think this movie has all the makings of decent Disney. Yep, and I'm not, I'm right there with you, Andrew. Um uh, coming from a perspective for someone who hasn't seen it that much, and it wasn't like something I watched huge when I was a kid, it it, it was enjoyable for me watching. Now I, I had a lot of laughs. You know, I enjoyed the villain, I enjoyed the main character, and it was short and it was sweet, and uh, but nothing mind blowing. Uh, the the, vil- the villain and the the was probably the best part. But as as far as like, it's kind of weird to get a taste of musical that could have come from this, but only kind of be like, all right, that's all you get. Because Radigan, that, that was a fun song. That was catchy. You know, like, Radigan, oh, Radigan. Like, that was, you know, simple, it's fun. And that, you know, song of the bar, eh. But, like, I'm with you. Like, I would have, Joseph, I would have loved to see if there were, like, more songs to this. It may have, like, because a lot of times, like, in this era, like, the songs elevate it so much. I felt like, you know, if, if there was, like, they made room for a lot more <laughs> songs, I feel like, oh, are you okay, Joe? I feel like it could have been elevated a little bit by that, by the great music that we're going to get later on in, like, the Disney yeah. years. But Because, um, I mean, uh, like, it, just in comparison, if you if Little Mermaid had no songs, I mean, oh, where yeah. would that fall? I mean, you know, yeah, and that's exactly. kind of like, those were the thoughts that were going through my mind when I was watching. I was like, this was, I love it still, but, like, it was like, oh, sing yeah. more. Yeah, and and it's like you know a lot a lot of times like depending on what it is the songs elevate these movies so much and I kind of like I wish they didn't have any at all if they were going that route even though I like Radigan it's like if you're not gonna do a musical just don't do a musical like Rescuers Down Under um, a movie which I quite like doesn't have any songs and it was like and so I never thought about it I never thought oh I wish there were songs because I'm like okay they're not making that movie and so but and. It, obviously, that means a lot to me, and it's going to mean a lot to me during, like, you'll see kind of, like, how I feel about, like, Disney musicals. Like, that's obviously going to be a big part of, like, my rating. But definitely dis- decent Disney, even though, like... But I will say the music is nice. Like, they had some nice themes going on there with the score. But, um, but yeah, think, decent Disney. I think something that's going to be, like, a reoccurring theme for us all... Um, and we'll, we'll obviously, like, even now, I think we all, like... 
really like this movie, but mm -hmm. the extra, say, like 15 minutes and the extra, I don't know, million dollars budget, like, are the difference between The Great Mouse Detective being what it is and, um, you know, 101 Dalmatians being what it is. It's like right. yeah. the... There's like something to be said about Disney. If they want something to be a classic, they're gonna bankroll it to be a classic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even we see that even to present day with a lot of the Disney movies that are coming out, like Inside Out. You know, or or whatever whatever movie they put out, they can almost like will it to be a classic. Yeah, this was at the point where it was like it's pre. Disney Renaissance, it's where we got movies like the lowest of the low of the, that time being like the Black Cauldron and then like kind of solely elevated to the point where what we're talking about here, Andrew. But, um, hey, Jordan, though, Jordan, no wonder you like the music. It's by one of my favorite composers and I didn't even know it. Henry Mancini. Even, I didn't know this. Oh, really? Henry Mancini. Oh, cool. Yeah, the music's quite good. I, I like the theme, it was really fun. Um, First, yeah. he did the Pink Panther, then the Great Mouse Detective. Same thing, it's amazing. right? <laughs> and Remington Steel, and like everything else that's out there. He's like 300 plus songs, themes, and stuff. Oh my Guy's gosh. a baller. Well, great pick, Joseph. Um, it's great to have the show. I'm excited to watch Disney movies. That's like the main thing about this show that I love so much the fact that I get an excuse to like revisit some of these Disney movies um, and discuss them. It's great. Um, so. We get, okay, decent Disney, decent Disney, Disney classic. Dang, Joe. All right, let's go ahead and uh, discuss what we're going to do next week. I'll go ahead and um, I have a movie picked out for us. next time we do it. <laughs> not next week, sorry. I, I said next week. We're not doing this weekly. Um, you can probably expect another one in like a month or so, maybe a little bit. Or three months. I'm just kidding. We're not, no, we're going to commit We're gonna commit to a date, and then we're going to stick to that or try yeah. to and see yeah. who can make it, basically. Um, Jordan, what do you got? All right, I'm going newer. We discussed that these movies, we're including these movies into Disney discussions. It's a Pixar movie. I'm going to go with WALL-E. We're going to watch WALL-E. Wall it's a movie I haven't seen in a while, and I'm excited to watch it, and I'm excited to discuss it with you and see if you I'm guys think of the movie. I'm into it. It's it on Netflix? It. It, I don't think yeah. it's on Netflix. There's no, there's not a Pixar movie on Netflix, you'll notice. Okay, which I didn't is know that. strange, unless you're counting, like, Pixar shorts, I think. But, um... Yeah, find a way to check it out. Maybe you like rent it, but watch it, and uh, yeah, be a part of the discussion. I rent it from Blockbuster, Jordan. I rent it from Blockbuster. Oh, okay, yeah. Time travel. Good. Right. <laughs> All right, Wally, it is. All right, guys, we'll see you then on our next episode of Disney Discussions. And remember, a dream <laughs> is a wish your heart makes. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Always. We need to have like a Disney <laughs> sign off or something. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>